because we're going to talk some more earnings here and we're going to focus in on restoration hardware stock ticker rh good morning and welcome to fast market jenny it's always a pleasure to talk to you uh what were you seeing this morning on rh uh in terms of social media and, and different things that you were researching some surprising strength, Alex, in this name all in all on social media, just obviously in the stock price. So we've seen a pretty phenomenal run up since their March lows. And since then, we've seen a string of all of these new all time highs in the name. I mean, when you look at these furniture retailers, RH is up about 50% year to date. They're up about 3% today into these post market earnings. And then you compare them to, say, a Wayfair. Wayfair is up over 200% year to date. At Home is up about 175% year to date. William Sonoma, which I actually think has the most comparable price point to say RH, is up 20% year to date. So all in all, these furniture retailers have seen phenomenal strength in the last you know, few months. But let's not forget, they are retailers still. So retailers have had to still you know, deal with their own share battles. So you know, RH has said they're working on these different cost-saving initiatives. They've reduced inventory. They've redesigned their supply chain. They've improved product margin. And they did say they expect revenue could lag demand growth in this current quarter. However, they have done so many things to kind of transform this RH brand. So, you know, what, what for so long was called Restoration Hardware, now they have this lifestyle brand that they're really trying to hit home with consumers. So because of this, now they've developed this whole reimagined RH brand online, which is called the world of RH. And this is supposed to be the best way to have the, you know, the best experiences. You can see the company's products, you can see their services, you know, they have all these different things contributing to their digital experience. So I think they're really trying to compete with say like a Wayfair at obviously a much higher price point, because you look at Wayfair's growth, it's due to the fact that they're predominantly online versus I think RH's price tag being so high, typically I'd think if I was buying a piece of furniture that costs say $4,000, I'd be going into the store. Now that hasn't necessarily been an option, so they're really expanding their digital footprint here to remain competitive. So we'll see if they were able to successfully do that. But I do have to agree, I mean, you go to an RH, it's typically for the experience. I live right by the one in Chicago and the Three Arts Cafe. It's like a whole whining and dining experience that does kind of make you, you know, want to buy something because it's all about, you know, the whole thing is pretty cool. But on social media, the buzz is similar to what I talked about with this high price point that RH obviously offers. And there's some mixed feedback on, you know, how expensive their products actually are, which brings me to our first tweet, which says, the actual biggest scam is how much a cloud couch costs from restoration hardware. The cheapest I've ever seen with two sectionals in a corner was $3,500. Full price, it would have been $5,600. So I don't know if Landon will have to back me up with his data, but this cloud couch I saw repeatedly on social media, it has like a cult-like following. I mean, it's expensive. At $5,600, it's not cheap, but this cloud couch, I mean, Landon will have to fact check me, but I saw it over and over again, which is pretty funny. But our next tweet focuses more on forward-looking growth, which is, of course, what we always want to focus on on this show. So our next tweet says, RH is a heavily misunderstood understood name. International expansion and rising margins will have the stock rise five to 10 times from here. Been discussing international segment for years with no movement and now London opens mid next year. This is just the beginning in my opinion, one of the best long-term opportunities in the market in my opinion. So RH London is set to open, like he said, sometimes next year. And then RH England and RH Paris are also on deck. And, you know, this is great international expansion, it seems like, is pretty much everything when it comes to retailers and just broader names in general. And, you know, I also have to say, even though I am excited about RH, Warren Buffett also has a 9% stake. So that has to tell you something good. But, Kevin, when you look at a name like RH, a furniture re retailer in the long term, will this growth continue or will people like me stop shopping once everything starts reopening? <laughs> hey, listen. I can can you all just envision out there right now a glass of wine and a new couch with Jenny Horn. <laughs> that's that's the yep. way her her nights go. But frankly, I'm still looking around my house right now trying to find out if I have a cloud couch cuz I don't know what a cloud couch is, but I'm sure someone's going to tell me very soon. So, uh, you know, restoration hardware, what I know about them is they have pretty high quality, high end merchandise. And if you know in the furniture business, 
If you're going to buy high quality, high end merchandise, it is not cheap. So what they do a really good job of, and their stock shows it, is they make it a pretty high end quality buying experience at RH. And I, what, what surprises me to look at their stock, guys, is how much this stock moves on a daily basis. I mean, it's up 2.5% today. It is moving all over the board the last few days, guys. Yeah, and clearly uh, something that you're, if you're going to buy for the long term, you know, some people may be willing to spend a little bit more for that, to your point, Kevin. So we'll, we'll see how that is influenced uh, by the data uh, as we uh, say goodbye to Jenny. Jenny, appreciate you taking the time. Great info as always. Getting us thinking about what a cloud couch just may be. Maybe Landon can tell, uh, tell us here because we got Landon Swan, co-founder of LikeFolio.com, joining the conversation. Landon, this is something for me um, that, that has stuck to me whenever we talk to retailers with you guys. And, of course, I want to get into the data, but you've made this point and Andy has made this point that, you know, this kind of shutdown, the pandemic is going to actually affect smaller businesses far greater. And when the dust settles, you know, maybe these big kind of established companies are, are what was left standing and they can actually look to benefit on the other side. Yeah, I think so. I think that's a good point. Um, bad time to be a small business owner for sure. But if you've got the cash to to sustain and then get through all this, you're going to have less competition if you're a larger business. So uh, good for a company like RH. Uh, but yeah, the prices, I got to say, they're, they're incredible. I mean, uh, you can buy a, a ceiling fan for $1,000 or you can buy a new bathroom vanity for $8,000. It is really, really high prices. And what's kind of crazy is their, their gross margins aren't that high. They're about 40%. Wayfair is around 60 or 70%. Obviously, the price points are very, very different. But you would think the, the one that's much higher priced is going to have higher margins. So uh, obviously, very expensive furniture to make, very high quality at, at uh, Restoration Hardware. Uh, but you know the stock's been doing really well, up about 4x since the bottoms of in March. And they've really been uh, you know charging on. I, I think they have about 100 stores right now. Uh, so very big online presence, and they are expanding, as Jenny pointed out. Uh, what's interesting is if you look at the purchase intent growth um, over the, the last quarter, uh, you know, if we haven't talked about a purchase intent is when people are talking about either going into the store or buying online, which is obviously a huge measure of revenue. And if you look at purchase intent on a fiscal quarterly basis, you can see that that very tall bar on the far right, and not the last one, that's the current quarter's pace. Which is about five weeks in, but that very the second to last one is the uh, the quarter that's about to be reported. We've got that one up significantly quarter over quarter and year over year. Um, depends on which analyst you talk to, but I believe estimates are coming in around 680, 690 million uh, based on our data and growth in past quarters. We think they're going to beat that number pretty easily. Uh, then it's just a matter of how does the street uh, respond to that. Of course, the stocks at near all time highs. Like I said, up 4x since the bottoms in March and still up 30% since the pre-COVID highs. So um, very high purchase intent coming into this earnings call. We expect them to have a very good quarter. And there's the popularity when you look at just people talking about the brand, the mentions overall, that's up about 45% year over year. So um, again, doing really well with the consumer. People are glad that the stores have reopened and they're eager to go out and spend a lot of money on furniture. Um, and so I think they're going to have a great quarter. It's just a matter of how analysts price that in based on the fact that it's trading near all time highs. Landon, my, my, my question to you is looking at a stock like this and a jump, and is it clearly people looking around their home wanting to upgrade their furniture and saying, well, if I'm going to if I'm going to work from home, I'm going to have a nicer place where I sit or a nicer desk or if I'm not spending money using exposable income on food and, and nightlife, I'm maybe going to upgrade some of the furniture in my home. What are you seeing as the catalyst? Because common sense says this company shouldn't be doing as well as they're doing right now. Overall, the economy is a little slower. The higher end furniture market shouldn't be flourishing like this company is flourishing. What are they doing? To, to, to stay this relevant and keep, obviously, the wheels turning here. 
Yeah, it, it has a lot to do with the home renovation. So we've got people talking about renovating their home, upgrading their home at a plus 64% year over year. So you force people to stay at home, and of course, they're going to want to make their homes better. A lot of that comes in the form of uh, you know, new tile, new floor, new carpet, painting the house, whatever it may be. Also, a lot of it comes in the form of buying new furniture uh, and just decking things out a little bit and maybe both. You know, if you get a, a new paint job, a new carpet, you want to put a nice piece of furniture on top of it. And so um, we're seeing that as a huge trend. Uh, and of course, the economy is not going bad for everyone that, you know, the jobs are starting to come back. I think unemployment got through, got people through a lot of it. You had the stimulus checks back then. I hope nobody just went out and blew, uh, you know, $4,000 on a chair with their stimulus check, but I'm sure somebody did. Uh, but it, it's wild. I mean, if you look at the popularity of, of this brand, it is just doing really, really well. Obviously, you can see the downtick uh, when the quarantine hit, but now we're back up to highs and starting, you know, close to all time highs. Uh, and so doing very well and consumers love this product. The happiness is about 78%, very high for a retailer. And so just overall, uh, they're in a good spot. I can't explain exactly why, you know, this furniture is doing so well because I haven't sat in it, I haven't used it, but I, I've seen it online. It is really nice looking furniture. The price tag scares me a little bit. I think I need to find a way to, to block that website from my home router or something, but, um, yeah, doing really well. And, um, I expect really big numbers out of their earnings tonight. I think they'll beat, but again, how is the street going to respond? Uh, Landon, kind of last thoughts here then. Is this one that from, from likes folios kind of perspective, are you guys looking for a longer term opportunity to kind of enter a position? Uh, does like folio have like an existing kind of call on this one? Cause you talk about the valuation maybe being extended uh, and I know that influences how you guys look at things sometimes. Yeah, sure. I, you know, evaluation is obviously very important. Uh, we've been pretty bullish on most uh, companies that benefit from people upgrading their homes in various different ways, be it furniture or hardware. Uh, even Lowe's and Home Depot are, are benefiting from that. And so, yes, we've been slightly bullish, not specifically on this name, but all kinds of uh, companies around this theme. Uh, I would say right now I would look for a pullback before I get into this company. Uh, we're moderately bullish going into the earnings call uh, because we do believe expectations are high, but we think that based on where the analyst numbers are coming in, we do think that they will beat. Um, again, it's just a matter of how much do analysts expect them to beat expectations, which is weird to think about, but that is a, that's, a, that's a factor you have to consider with earnings these days.